Hey everyone, Eric here. In today's video, I'm going to be addressing the topic, so you've got a new Line 6 Pod Go, now what do you do? Just like in one of my previous videos, I'm going to, as quickly as possible, share with you some time-saving tips. We're gonna unbox the unit, we're gonna power it up, we're gonna register it, and we're gonna start creating some presets and show you how easy this thing is right out of the box. Eric Jr. and I had the pleasure of seeing the pod go uh, this past winter NAM in Anaheim, California. Not only did we get to see it hands-on with some demos from staff, but we also got to sit down front row in the Line 6 uh, booth and watch the incredible Paul Heinmarsh take it uh, through its paces. And we'll link to that video in one of the cards uh, above and down in the description down below. Having several Helix units, I've had the unboxing experience multiple times, but this is going to be my first time unboxing the pod go. And I'm not going to lie, I'm really excited. Another important note here is in my previous video, so you've got a new Line 6 Helix, now what do you do? I'll link that in the card and in the description down below. At the time of shooting that video, I had uh, several months of experience hands-on using Helix. This will be not only my first time unboxing PodGo today, but this will be my first time using it. So we'll learn together how quickly we can adapt to this awesome piece of gear. All right, let's unbox this thing. We've got our knife. We're going to cut into this thing for the very first time and have a look. Very simple. One little piece of uh, protective tape. All right, so right on the top, and the foam we have, which I would assume was going to be the power supply. I like to try to save all my boxes as, as good as I can. Wall wart type of power supply. Nice. Okay, that's cool. I dig it. I'll try to show you the inside of the box here as well, too. All right. And we have some things down below, so we'll show you those one moment as well, too. I'll just toss the foam off to the side. Important notice. It's basically, once you break that seal, you're agreeing to their terms. At NAM, I don't remember ever picking up the unit, so I never did get to experience the weight. It's got decent weight to it without being uh, super heavy, if that makes any sense. So it's, it's solid construction. I like the grips on the bottom. So you, when you pick it up, you can kind of grip it right here. Fantastic, expression pedal here. Quite nice. Buttons feel like Helix. We'll peel off the protective uh, film there and everything in a moment. All right, so we've got an accessory package here that consists of, it uh, looks like probably a warranty card. Uh, probably not a manual because uh, they give the, the manuals are online in a PDF. USB cable, uh, Allen wrench for adjusting, I'm assuming just like Helix, with the uh, tension on, on the expression pedal, so you can adjust that to your liking, whether you like it, you know, free, or if you want it to be, uh, like, kind of tight. And there is, looks like a cheat sheet inside here as well, too, and that'll be available on PDF through Line 6 website as well, too. But a cheat sheet, which will pretty much give you everything you need to know without having to read, you know, page after page after page uh, of material. And it looks like it might possibly, yeah, front and back. So front and back cheat sheet. On the back of the unit as well, too, we'll show you. Uh, we have from, I guess we'd be te technically going from left to right. You've got your power. You've got your uh, USB. Actually, your powered jack uh, on and off power. USB to run to your computer, which will this will double as a fantastic USB audio interface, just like Helix, Stomp, and uh, other units. Uh, headphone uh, jack right there. Amp direct out. You've got main out left and right. Uh, they're, they are balanced or unbalanced, so you could run tip ring sleeve to, uh, to an XLR to run to front of house or your recording console. Uh, effects loop, send and return, which is fantastic. So you want to hook up other external pedals to this, you can do that no problem. An additional expression pedal, so you can have one, the built-in one plus another, and then your guitar input off to the far right. Uh, very, very similar layout to Helix on the back, obviously missing a few things like XLR jacks, and there's no Variax input but it's a different beast altogether. So, all right, so there's the ins and outs of that baby, the front of it. We've got our typical one, two, three, four, five buttons here, multi, multi function buttons here. Our home and view button action, very similar layout to uh, HX Stomp. Um, page, page, you've got your volume control here as well too, and indicators for wah, volume, expression pedal one or two, and then the expression pedal, one, two, three, four, buttons across the bottom, four across the top here, uh, mode, tap, tuner, all that fun stuff. So we're going to uh, get some of this stuff out of the way. We're going to power it up for the first time. We're going to download some software, and then we're going to create some tones. Stick around. I'm going to move some of the debris here, and we'll get right to it. Okay, so I've got the PodGo hooked up here on the desk. I've got the USB cable plugged in uh, to my computer, um, to my Mac in this case, and I've got the power supply ready to go. We're going to power it on. We're going to have our first look at the unit as it boots up. So let's do that right now. All right, here we go. We're going to boot it up. Oh, I love that. The kidney-shaped pod. Very, very cool. There we go. And it tells us our firmware. It's hard to see it on the screen, but it says 1.0.1. All right, so here we go. One of the factory presets. We're going to just adjust this. Actually, before we do that, let's pull off the uh, little film here. Junior saw this a little while ago, and he wanted to pull it off. He has a fascination with peeling off film off of uh, 
electronics. All right, so there we go, a little cleaner. And I do apologize for the focus here. I'm using another web, secondary webcam uh, to just shoot the overhead here as well too. But the first thing I noticed about this just before I even plugged it in uh, was the preset select knob. It's very, very nice. It's actually a physical click, very tactile, I guess would, uh, would be the description. You, I don't think you can hear the click, but it's a, it's a nice physical reminder. Click, click, click as you're changing presets. Okay, so you go through these various presets here as well too. And if you hit the view knob, which is like the home and the view, okay, you can actually see uh, your your uh, effects and blocks and all those kind of things, right? So there we have volume pedal, a wah, uh, send and return. There's a distortion, an amplifier, 4x12, nothing, nothing. Okay, got a reverb room, and then some simple EQ, and then our output block. Okay, so what we're going to do here in a moment, I'll jump screens for a quick second. We are going to uh, connect to Line 6. We're going to go to line6.com. We're going to download uh, the latest Line 6 updater. We're going to grab the software for the Pod Go, and we're going to get it up to the latest firmware, and then we're going to show you how to create some presets. I haven't even plugged a guitar into this thing yet, so I am 100% green with this unit, but we're going to learn it together, and I'm, I'm hoping my goal here is to show you that how quickly we can get into this, get it updated to the latest firmware, and start having some fun with it right out of the box. Okay, let's, let's jump over to the Line 6 website right now. Okay, so here we are at the Line 6 website at line6.com. Uh, we're going to be doing several things here. We're going to be downloading uh, Line 6 Updater, which will allow us to update the Pod Go to the latest firmware. We're going to download the companion software for it. And if we wanted to, we could also download the Quick Start Guide, the Pilot's Guide, and the full the full manual for uh, Pod Go. So we'll maybe do that here in this video as well too. The first thing you're going to want to do is if you haven't um, purchased or owned a Line 6 product before or have no Line 6 account, you're going to want to create an account uh, by clicking on the little icon up near the upper right looks like a little person you want to click on that and you want to click on create an account and you'll walk through all those steps it's pretty self-explanatory choose your device that you have all that kind of stuff and then carry on to the next step if you already have other line six products you've registered them before or you've purchased something through the website uh, your credentials just click on click on that click on sign in we'll do that now Okay, we're signed in, and first thing we want to do is we want to go to downloads. And I'm gonna, I'm going to assume this is either the your first time downloading uh, the software Line Six Updater, or you might have an outdated version. So the process would still be the same for you. So we're gonna click on downloads. We're going to click on Line Six Updater, and it will automatically determine what your operating system is. In my case here, I'm using Mac. All right, we'll click on Get Download. Got to agree to the terms of service, of course. We got it. So it's starting to download. All right, so that is the first piece that we need. Line 6 updater, we'll be running that in a moment. So we're going to click back on downloads again. Okay, now we're going to go through. We're going to grab the next step for Pod Go. So scroll down. Oops, went too far. There we go, Pod Go. All software, we're going to hit on Go. All right, so it's Pod Go Edit. So if you look at our other products like uh, HX Stomp, HX Effects, Helix, we use a software called HX Edit. In this case here, the software is called Pod Go Edit. So we're going to grab that right now. Okay, I agree to the terms. That is downloading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install uh, both of these pieces of software off video, off camera, and we'll speed back up here. All right, we'll also jump over and have a look what we can grab for manuals. If we wanted the manuals, I'll show you where to get them. We can click on Support, click on Manuals. Scroll down till we see Pod Go. Lots of cool products. There we go. There's Pod Go. And on Pod Go, we've got the cheat sheet available in three languages English, French, and Japanese. Uh, that's the cheat sheet that I showed you that came in during the unboxing portion of the video. We've got um, a percent load statement. I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, Pod Go 1.1 uh, owner's manual, and then the Pod Go edit. Pilot's Manual. So, the, you know, various, various things you can download here as well, too. I'm going to skip them for the sake of this video, but you know where to get them if you need to come back here. And I will also link these uh, links in the description down below as well, too, for a quick link to them. Uh, but we're going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to install software off camera here, and we're going to come back, and we're going to start updating our Pod Go and start having some fun with it. All right, so let's jump over to that. Okay, just a moment ago, I said I wasn't going to show the installation process of the Pod Go Edit software, but I didn't realize I was going to see the awesome Mr. Paul Heinmarsh in the installation process. So we got to show Paul. All right, let's install this package here. 
That's pretty cool. All right, so just going to walk through. Pretty self-explanatory. Got to agree to all the terms, just like anything else. All right, install. All right, pretty fast installation. There we go. Close. Yep, we'll move to the trash, and we'll talk to you soon, Paul. Okay, so we've got Podgo Edit installed. What first thing we're going to do before we even uh, venture into Podgo is we're going to launch Line 6 Updater, which we've downloaded and installed off-camera, of course. And I've, I've had it installed for quite some time because I use it for updating these products back here. But we're going to launch that right now, take a look to see where the firmware is for Podgo, update that, and jump right back. Okay, so here we are at the Line 6 Updater Utility that we just installed and we downloaded here earlier. We're going to log in and we're going to have a look to see where uh, Podgo sits. Okay, so we see we have our Helix Rack, Helix Floor, and Podgo uh, with a version 1.0, 1.0. So we're going to physically click on that one. Okay, like anything when you're updating your software, your firmware, I should say, on a device, make sure you don't interrupt any power, don't turn the unit off, don't be bumping any USB cables that you could potentially pull out um, the cable and do any damage during transfer because it could cause some damage. Okay, so we're going to grab 1.10.0. All right, and it's released on um, what, uh, March 31st by the looks of it. We're going to hit update. It tells you what to do here. All right, we're going to continue on. Follow those instructions carefully. Very, very good idea to not rush or something like this. I've done this multiple times, so I feel a little, I feel a little bit more confident going through here. But I do recommend that you follow these instructions, um, You know, especially if this is your first device. You don't want to do anything wrong to possibly damage it. Okay, terms and service, again, we pretty much, you can sit there and read them if you got all day. In this case, for the speed of video's sake, we're going to just say, I accept. All right, the process is now uh, downloading and getting ready to install firmware uh, via the website. This will take a moment or two, and we'll probably do a little bit of an edit here as well, too, to speed this up. Now we're really cruising. We're over 50%. We're about 50%. We should be done in just a moment. Okay, home stretch now, just about there. Okay. We'll now restart automatically. Okay, we're going to reboot. And what we're going to do here, actually, I can't even show you on the camera because it's done it so fast. So your unit will reboot. All right, let's power it back up. I thought for a moment there I had a, uh, some, uh, some kind of lint or something on my screen, but it's actually a reflection of the camera in the PodGo uh, display. Oh, we got version 1.10.0, so we're good with that. All right, pretty fast boot up. All right, so we're going to jump over in a second and create our very first presets. We're moving along quite well here. I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Okay, so next thing we're going to do here is we're going to launch Pod Go Edit, and we're going to have a look at that. I haven't even used it myself yet ever. I feel fairly confident to say that it's going to be very similar to HX Edit. So we're going to have a look and launch that right now. All right, there we go. Move it over to the center of the screen here. All right, it's connecting. All right, so I can click on my account, put in my credentials if I want. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna maximize this a little bit for us, just so we can get some more view here. All right, so there we go. Very very similar to our HX edit. All right, we got all of our presets here. We can click on each of them and choose whatever we want. Very very simple. Drag and drop. Or, you know, kind of what you see is what you get here. And whatever we change on the uh, unit itself over on Pod Go, we'll make those uh, changes as well too. We can drag order of pedals, all that kind of cool stuff. Right, whatever we want. Nice and easy, easy peasy. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to go to the next step. I haven't even hooked this thing up into my mixer yet. So we're going to jump over, run some cables to this baby, and then we're going to create some presets. Stick around. Okay, looking at the presets right off the get-go, I saw one that really uh, piqued my curiosity. Obviously, Rev Gen Red, high-gain amplifier. Uh, we're going to give that one a try without touching anything on it. See how it sounds using a single pickup guitar here, the uh, Line 6 uh, SR250 Variax Shuriken. All right, let's have a look and see what this one sounds like. <laughs> Okay, let's go over and play with some of the effects that are turned off and see what we can do with that. Let's go over to the delay. Let's have a look at this one for a second and let's change that to, uh, let's go to a vintage digital. No, you know what? Let's go simple delay. That's pretty simple, right? Okay, and let's change that up to... Let's bring it to around one of my favorites, somewhere in 350 milliseconds, and see what we sound with that. All right. Bring that feedback down. Bring the mix down. Let's 
It's coming to life, isn't it? I like that. Pretty simple, pretty straight up, man. And what do we got there? Okay, awesome. We're going to leave it at that. So we're going to actually jump over now to a blank preset and show you how easy it is to physically create our own presets. Okay, so staying on that screen where we just were a second ago, we've got factory uh, presets, okay, and then we've got user, and then we also have impulse responses. We'll cover impulse responses for PodGo on a later date. Very, very similar how it works with other devices. You've seen it probably in some of our other videos, but for now, we're going to go over to user, and there's no presets on this unit because we haven't created anything yet. So we're going to create a new preset. All right, so every preset comes with a few defaults that you can change to your liking. All right, so you have an expression pedal, uh, which would be like a volume, possibly uh, a wah pedal. You've got different blocks here as well, too. So let's grab an amplifier. I'm going to go back to one of those higher gain amplifiers as well. So I'm just going to sim very simply click, double click that. All right, actually, sorry, I'm going to go here. We're going to pick the amp that we want. All right, so let's uh, see, possibly mm -hmm. in this one here, we will use the RevGen Purple. Okay, so now we've got this. Okay, let's have a look, see what our cabinet is. That's a 412. Okay, I'm going to maybe change that to something else. I'm going to keep it a 412, but I like vintage 20s. Um, something like this. I'm liking that already. Okay, now I want to put some comfort effects in here. Like, I want to put in some reverb. All right, and let's see what we got there. Uh, let's go over to, let me see here. Let's go over to our handy dandy plate. And that's a big plate, isn't it? All right, so obviously first thing we want to do, bring down our decay, somewhere around five. Mix, bring it down to maybe 25%. How's this sounding? I'm liking that. All right. Now I want to get some delay in there. All right. Let's put up on a delay pedal. All right. And let's go with our simple delay like we did just a moment ago. All right. Double click it. Okay. And let's bring that time down to about 385, somewhere in that neighborhood. And if you're wondering why I'm picking these numbers out of thin air, just over the years of, you know, playing with different effects, I kind of know my my favorite settings, right? So it's gonna be a longer delay, okay? And it's, ping, it's kind of a ping pong as well too. I'm gonna bring the feedback back to around 25. I bring the mix, probably even less than that. And we're gonna bring the mix uh, down to about 25 as well. It's just, it's just like seasoning to taste, like how much salt you want on your fries, right? <laughs> Not bad. Okay. Now let's go see if we can pop on maybe let's say a distortion pedal in front of that amplifier and see what we can get uh, happening there. All right. So we're going to click on distortion and let's throw on the Tima. Oh, nice. Love it already. So very, very quickly. Now we're getting some high gain in there, right? Uh, some of that hiss. Let's just see if we can do the same thing like we can on the other devices. Click on the input there and let's turn on the input gate. There we go. Very, very simple. Oh, this is very simple, isn't it? Look at this. And listen to that. Do you hear that go away? Awesome. Oh, way cool. Off and on. Very, very simple. So let me see. Let's try one more thing. I'm going to try something different here. Let me see. I'm going to... See if I can do, uh, let's take this here, okay? And let's change, no, I'm gonna leave the EQ the same. In 10, oh, 10, if you use a 10 band EQ, you're gonna love it. You go in here, and what I like to do is I like to kind of dime my mids somewhat, okay? Let's do something like this. I really, really like dimed mids. And I'm just kind of painting by number at the moment. Okay, we can bring up, bring a little bit of lows in, okay? And I don't want too many highs to be too shrill. Okay, so we're somewhere in that neighborhood. It's great for solos. Now it's also, we might, might want to play with the output of that a little bit as well too, because that's going to add pr a pretty significant dB boost. But for cutting for solos, absolutely fantastic. So, you know, I'm pretty much happy with this preset as it is now. I would turn off uh, the EQ for the main rhythm parts. 
Uh, let me just see for fun. We could uh, go over to the delay pedal and let's maybe change that delay pedal to something a little different. Uh, and let's see what we can do here. Let's go over here. Let's go on to here. Let's change this over to pitch. And I'm going to try for my very first time to try my patented. And when I say that term, I mean that I use that term loosely, my patented. It's my favorite uh, pitch detune to give you that wet, dry, wet kind of effect. All right. So we're going to go into dual pitch. All right. And very, very simple. This is what it would sound like right now. It sounds absolutely horrible because we've got all kinds of uh, pitch changing going on. We don't want that. We want to bring our interval, interval down to zero the first one because there's dual and we want to go over to our second interval which is like plus 16 was hence the reason why you're getting that crazy sound we're gonna bring that down to zero as well too we're going to go over to our sense we're going to bring something on the left hand side or uh, the, in this case um, interval sense one we're going to bring it down to let's say minus 10 see if we can get it see if we can get it real okay we got it and we're going to do the opposite over on the right hand side for sense two we're going to do the exact opposite so if it's 10 minus it's 10 positive <laughs> Okay, now that mix is uh, fairly, fairly hot, so I want to maybe bring that down a little bit more, and I'm going to try this for a second. Uh, okay, we'll leave that there. Let's bring the mix down. There we go. There we go. Very, very easy. All right, so now we can actually save that preset. We'll call it uh, Eric's, if I can spell, first pod. Go. Boom. Did I type it right? We got it. So our first preset. Okay, we're going to spend just a moment here, but this is something very, very important I want to share with you. We're going to jump into the global settings of PodGo. So over on the unit itself, we're going to hit the page left and right buttons at the same time. We're going to hit the button for global settings. Okay, and we have ins and outs, preferences, uh, switches and pedals, and MIDI tempo. If you have a Helix or a Stomp, you're familiar with the global settings. If not, these are little ways that you can kind of tweak the unit to your liking. Uh, right now I'm seeing a lot of things just set up from the factory that I won't even touch. I'm not going to touch a guitar pad in. Um, the line output is a line signal because I'm running to a console here. If it was running to like an effects return on your amplifier, you might change that to instrument like this. Whoops, I got the right one. There we go. All right, but we're going to leave it at line. So I won't even bother touching anything that I'm not going to make uh, adjustments on. So you can see that there's a little icon there showing that there's another page. So if we hit page over, there we go. We can make any changes there. I'm going to turn the little knob at the top. That would be the same knob that you use for your presets changing. It goes over to uh, preferences, and we have uh, link, snapshot, edit, and tempo and pitch. Now, this is something I am going to change. This one here, tempo or pitch, or tempo pitch, and it's set to authentic. I am going to change that to transparent. And what that will do for, in very short Col, uh, Coles notes uh, is that, let's say you had a preset that had 300, milli, 300 milliseconds of delay and you had another one, um, a snapshot or another preset around 600 and you switch from one preset to the next, that could ramp, that delay could try to ramp up to catch up to speed or slow down to speed, however, where you're going forward or backward in, in time and that can cause some really strange uh, sounds. So if you want to bypass that or ignore that, I put it to transparent. Okay, so we're gonna, that's the only thing on that page, nothing else. We're gonna go over to switches and pedals. Okay, and I see everything there so far I like is pretty much consistent. I'm gonna go page over. I'm gonna have a look there. I see everything there is fine for me right now. If I was gonna add a different exp uh, expression pedal, I could change some things there if I wanted to, but we're gonna leave it the same for now for argument's sake. Okay, and this is something that I like to turn off. I tend to, you can't see it right now, but my tempo is blinking uh, for my tap tempo on my on my unit. And it if it was on camera or things like that, it could drive people crazy seeing the blinky, blinky, blink uh, in tempo or whatever the BPM is at. So I change that to off. Whoops, there we go. So I that's my personal preference, so I'm not seeing that light on and it can just kind of be distracting. Uh, so that's it for the pages on that one. We turn over one more time and we're at MIDI tempo and there's nothing I'm going to change there. I'm not a MIDI guru by any, uh, any means. So a lot of times I leave my MIDI stuff default. So there we go. Okay. One of the other important things here to do while we're at the line six website is to register our new purchase that will provide us with warranty and support. So the first thing to do, just like we did through our account at the top of the screen, we click on the little person, the little icon, we go to our account, we go to registered gear and we're going to register a new product. So we simply use the product selector, scroll down to pod go. Once again, so many products to choose from, isn't there? Okay. There we go. There's pod go. 
Now, the serial number will be written on the back or the bottom of the unit, plus it'll be also written on the box. And my one and my last video on the Helix version of this video, uh, someone had gave me a good suggestion in the comments that um, it's always best to use the serial number off the unit, just in case if it, uh, you know if it's a different if, if there's a difference in serial numbers, whatever, always use the the serial number off the unit. Uh, so in this case, I'm not even going to register mine at the moment, but it's self self explanatory. Put in uh, the serial number, uh, the date you purchased it. You can scan a receipt or take a picture with your phone, whatever, and then where you pr purchased it, and then hit registered gear. Down below, you'll see all your registered gear. If you've had other units, you'll see your, your pod go now listed alongside your previously registered products. Pretty simple. All right, so there you have it. That was a lot of fun. This was my first time getting my hands on PodGo since NAM. Even at NAM was just a basic uh, brief overview by the staff there. And then, as I said earlier at the top of the video, we were able to watch a really fun performance from Paul Heinmarsh, who just took this thing from A to Z and everywhere in between. A phenomenal player, and he knows Pod inside. No, it was great. But nice to get our hands on, uh, and I hopefully you found it helpful to you know update your unit, register it, of course, for warranty and things like that. It goes to show you right out of the box, you're ready to plug in and go in just a matter of moments with PodGo. If you found this video helpful today, I would really appreciate it if you consider giving me a thumbs up. It lets me know that you uh, enjoy the, the videos that we do here. And if you're new to the channel, I would greatly encourage you and uh, thank you if you would subscribe right now. Turn on post notifications so you'll be notified when we do more content like this, upload content and go live. Speaking of live, we'll be doing some live broadcasts, live playthroughs through PodGo uh, in the coming days and weeks. So make sure you are subscribed and have those notifications set because a lot of times they're just off the cuff and you never know when they're coming. So we're all at home together. We'll have some time and share some fun uh, experiences with PodGo from Line 6. Also, there's links down below to purchase uh, Line 6 products as well, too. They are Amazon affiliate links, and we do get a small commission. Just being I'm very transparent and sharing that with you. All right, this has been a pleasure with you today. We'll look forward to seeing you at the next video. Be safe, and until next time, cheers. Cheers.